So I'm gonna show you a tip if you wanna eat pot noodles really fast. There you are, look, look, see that light flickering? That's pretty dangerous. There's the bang bang wire. I'll show you why it really isn't as complicated as it's made out to be. Hey guys, welcome back to my skating video. I'm gonna show you how to ollie over a wall. Whoa, that was gnarly. Come back for more trips next time. So we've arrived. It's changed a little bit, hasn't it, from the last video. This wall, when I was here last, this was still being built. It was only about halfway up, um, but that's all the way to the ceiling now. All the, it's all been plastered and painted, so it's lovely. It's very good in that um, it looks really nice, and it's nice because we'll actually see the finished result. But also, I'm really hoping I've got all my cable runs right because uh, now it's all plastered and painted. If anything has been forgotten um, or missed or done incorrectly, which obviously it wouldn't be because I only have myself to blame, then that would be a right pain. But um, I think I've got all the switches for the cookers and things inside here. Um, got feeds behind there to put LED tapes and that inside here. So it's done such a good job. Like this wall was completely covered by kitchen units and you can see all the holes. So I think we'll do our little trick tomorrow to get rid of all of those holes. We've got this chased into the sandstone here for all of our um, light switches and things. Got the utility room, consume units in there. I think I'll let Dan tomorrow do that. And then I think this is gonna be a cupboard across here. So we've got some smoke alarm or probably carbon monoxide alarm or something in there. There's a few spurs and things. I think, uh, oh gosh, yeah, I really need to do their heating controls for them as well. That wasn't agreed, but as in like, I don't think it was planned, but we can't be leaving it like that for them, can we? Where's that going up to? Oh, it's just going up to a plug on a timer. We can sort all of that for them. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so we're gonna get lights on first. I'm gonna see if, because it's just been such a horrendously unproductive day. It's 4.30 nearly, and I've done absolutely nothing productive other than sit on my bum, drive, and do obviously a kickflip lesson. Um, so I'm gonna use the JCC V50s, not sponsored, however, I think they're fantastic products and it helps for customers like this where um, if they change their mind between cool white or warm white or whatever in certain areas you can just flick between them um, and you don't have to change the driver or anything like that. So we'll go for it, we'll get started. And to people that say I can't strip like this without damaging it, come and inspect close up. No damage at all. It is the fastest way to do it. You just have to get used to using your cutters. Right, so I'll quickly explain how you do these. I mean, they're quite self-explanatory really, but Max has said I have to explain it. So, strip it back. I bend it out like that, so that you have a nice um, spread. I cut it, so there's about, I don't know, inch on it. Strip it back to there. Get a little bit of sleeve in. Here's some I tied earlier. Slide it on, mark it, pop it off. And then you get the driver and you see they're marked live, earth neutral. I push all three down, I line them up and pop them in until I can't see any more copper. And Bob's your uncle. Bada bing bong, that quick. Plug your light in. This is so Mike, make a note that this is the end of line because when you come back and test, you can just pop that out and a link across the uh, line and earth for your R1 plus R2. It's literally as simple as that. So another little tip, where you see the plaster is just over plastered the hole slightly, just get a sharp standing blade and just gently push against it like that. So you're kind of lifting up as you're cutting and scratching round it like that. And then that way it's not gonna crack when you push the light fitting in. It's a bit horrible to stand underneath. But then when we put the fitting up, it means they're not going to have to patch up and repaint because you've cracked their plaster. So that's the other little pretty self-explanatory tip of the day. So someone's 
trying to blade along it, look, come apart. I'll just put a bit of tape around the end of the insulation. Can you just grab some of my bag, please? I need a bit more insulation cut out, um, but I've got a tip, but I'm gonna need a hoover for it because it's gonna be a horrible mess. I'll hoover as I go. So I'm gonna show you a tip. If you wanna eat pot noodles really fast, and also if you wanna get rid of Celotex, you just stick this in and then we'll get rid of it. It's an old builder's tip, but I'm just gonna get the hoover running at the same time. I wasn't expecting any dust, but it's becoming increasingly dusty. Okay, so this is just a single switch going here then. Might trip your RCD. Shorten out the neutral and earth. All right, I won't turn that on just yet because that's going to make it live out here. Right, so annoyingly, I think I might not have labelled this or maybe I, maybe I labelled it and someone rubbed it off. Okay, I didn't label it. That one's LED tape, that one's... I think I meant to do it, feed in, feed out, and then all your loads through that one. So I'm pretty sure that was how I did it. But only one way to find out was we'll switch the back. Well, I mean, we could test. That's the only way to find out is to test. <laughs> Come back soon when we've tested it. Oh, I'm pretty sure it goes from there to here. Yeah. Pretty sure. If one of these is live, then we'll know. Then where's the feed out from that one going? Hmm. Sure, one of these was live. Can't think why there wouldn't be power there then. Unless the breakers failed. That's a bit of a freak coincidence if it has, but I'll check. There you are, look, look, see that light flickering? Yeah. That's just your breaker that's failed. How do you know? What? Well, the light's flickering and all I've done is touch the touch the breaker. Oh. I reckon it's just a bad connection in the top. Yeah, let's just yeah, grab it. Never done that before. Grab a this looks like uninsulated oh, steps, but they're insulated. They're just they're just sprayed metal colour for all the haters. And they're made to sound. The carbon fibre is made to sound like metal. It's made for the old school tradesmen that used to like working off metal steps. Obviously, health and safety regulations now mean that you can't. But yeah, I'll leave the link to them in the description below. Carbon, just like metal. We interrupt this episode of Artisan Electrics for a quick rundown of some history in History with Biggie Mac. Right, so this is the butter market, and this was actually a jail, but it only fitted one person in there at a time. Um, and you see on the weather vane on the top, there's the flag. There's actually two bullet holes out of that flag, and that was when two farmers come out in the night and had a shooting competition to see if they could hit the flag, and apparently, by the looks of it, they both hit the flag. Right, now let's see if we have bang bang over here. Now one of these should surely, unless I did go back to the board, I'm pretty sure I remember. Ah, there's the bang bang wire. The one that makes you go, ow. Which one is down lights? Let's not touch the earth, shall we? Bend that one back out of the way. That will go bang. Testing. <laughs> that one is the centre light, I believe. And that is your kitchen lights there. I think you've got a problem there, to be honest, with those lights, because I think that cable that had a slice in it, I don't know what's happened there, because that was all brand new, obviously. But I'm pretty sure this one here would have been that. Ah, uh, it's possible I just missed a cable thinking that was the end of line, because I was just one cable down, but it might so have come back out. That's fine, so that light there must have a feed out to it. I just saw one cable. Cool, cool, cool. The problem there was um, the breaker. The chances of that happening are uh, pretty freak, but probably that board's not been switched off in ages. And that's what you get for buying a BG home brand board. It lasts about 30 seconds and then it'll break. Sorry, screw fix own brand board um, before they switched over to the top quality BG boards they now use. Yeah, I'll just give it a flick on and off a few times and the power is back on. So that's pretty dangerous. But we're swapping the board tomorrow, so I don't really care. 
Right, so while I'm stripping out, I'm going to try and make sense of it. So this is feed. So feed, I'm just going to chop. I'm not going to leave any strips on it. I want this in switch number two. So I'm just going to do two little pulls on the wire. I know that's going into switch two. Neutrals are all going in together. Earths are all going in together. Easy peasy. Don't really need to worry about that. This one here, I think this is the one I want in switch one. So switch one, we'll just do one little stripe like that. So I know that's going into switch one. This one here, same story, I'll strip it back. Get all the earths out of our way. We don't need them, don't need the neutrals just yet. Don't need the earths just yet. So the only, the really switching is ridiculously easy. It's made out to be complicated because you've got so many wires, but it's just not complicated. So these are the only ones that could be construed as complicated, okay? So let's just get those out of the way and let's focus on these bad boys. I'll show you why it really isn't as complicated as it's made out to be. I'm going to get all of my switch lines up and out of the way and I'm just going to dress these in. So these are all my neutrals. So these aren't going to be switched. We don't switch the neutral in the UK. I think some places like Japan they might do it but not here because we either require a double pole or the line conductor to be switched. So I don't want to cut it too short because uh, in case they ever want to change it or adjust things or whatever. So I'm going to leave plenty of slack in the back of the box. I'm going to pull it in like this, dress it around and I'll probably just chop it there. And then the way go, but the way goes can sit just there in the back, but not behind the screw, because what you don't want is the screw to go through and it, clip it. So this gray wire is the three core, um, and I'm using that for switching for the um, under cabinet lighting, which we'll come to later, but I've left the extra core just in case, but you don't ever use the black as the neutral, that's the old standard colors. Nowadays it's the gray as the neutral with a tiny bit of blue sleeving on it, which I'm gonna look for now. Okay, so this is my spare core. I'm just gonna bung that in there with the earths for now, because uh, I'm not planning on using that, but it be, might be a handy little feature for people in the future. Um, I thought if I'm running power over there, I might as well give them the option for a permanent life, same as if you're doing pendants and things in the house. It's nice to run the first feed to the um, first downlighter or pendant, whatever, in a three course, that if they ever wanna add smoke alarms or anything like that, they've kind of got that. This is the bit now where I guess it's slightly more complicated, but it's still really not, really, really not complicated. Um, so all we're gonna have is one of these would be our permanent, which I have lost track of, I believe. <laughs> it was this one here. This one here is our live. And this is gonna link out the bottom of the switch. See this little zigzag arrow? This is our common. So we want that to link out all the way across. I'm gonna go along like that, mark it there, do a little slice pull a little bit. It's better to have one continuous piece of cable if you can help it. Oh, a bit too much, a bit too much. There we go. Lovely little connection. No break in the wire. We'll pop that one in there like so and tighten that up. And then same thing again. We'll do a nice little bend round. Mark where the cable's going to go in. Just do a little nick. Back the screw out. No copper on show, no break in the wire. Right, so make sure it's all nice and tight. Now this one here, what I'll probably do is I'll just cut it there. Um, make sure it's all symmetrical. And then what that's doing is that's carrying the loop or the, uh, the feed in for that circuit through all of the commons. And you see how much neater that looks. Um, and if you had a feed out, you could have the feed in going there. And if you had a feed out to the next switch bank, you'd have it going there. So it's one continuous bit of wire going through your switches and off to the next point. And then each leg out will come out of your L1s. You're not using your L2. I mean, on a dimmer switch, it doesn't really matter because it's a push button, it won't look upside down. So it would just be, let's say this is the feed out to the spotlights, bosh. If you had the feed out to the center light, bosh. Feed out to whatever else and it just is switching the power from there over to L1. So it's actually incredibly simple. So what we'll do now is I'll connect this up, make it look nice, and then uh, show you afterwards. Uh, 
Mark Zuckerberg Berg lizard drink. Have you seen that? No. Nathan cut it in here. Cool, so this is all labelled up now, just makes it a little bit easier for someone working in, the, in here in the future. Um, if I had some LED, sorry, if I had some of the uh, heat shrink, that would be gorgeous, but I don't. So there's no need to have messy switches, even when they're really busy. So I'm just gonna bend it back and push it in like so. Dressing it in as I push it. Nice smooth bends on the cable so that nothing is, nothing is forced. And there we have it. That's our switch. So annoyingly, re reliably rubbish, the British General drivers are absolutely, um, dimmer modules, sorry, are absolutely trash and I can't adjust it and they're just flickering with these lights. So. The guy tomorrow, you'll see on the next video, he's gonna bring some decent ones from his wholesaler nearby. So I'll swap that over to another one, but at least it was a nice example of how to do it nicely. And that is all for today. I think we've got all the lights on, kind of. We had a wicked little skate. Subscribe, thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next one.